freshness as they blazed a trail towards freedom through the darkest of nights. Yes, we can. It was sung by immigrants as they struck out for distant shores and pioneers who pushed westward against an unforgiving wilderness. Yes, we can. Hey, it's Cami on the Street here in West Hollywood at Gay Pride 2009. Woo! And we are ready to party and we are ready to meet some wonderful, exciting new people here in West Hollywood, Gay 2009. Yeah! Back to you. All right. Devon? Mm -hmm. Devon? Devon. Devon. Okay. All right. Here we go again. All right. I'm Shelby with Tomorrow Pictures and I'm here with Devon. Um, we're in Atlanta and I'm asking whether or not you are a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a non-partial to a party. Non-partial like to, non to a party? Do you vote? Yes. You do vote? I do. Are you going to vote in this election? Yes, I am. Um, are you going to, do you mind telling us if you're going to vote for Barack Obama? I'm or definitely Barack, vote Obama? For Barack Obama. Okay. I had an example on the 4th of July. The dogs are barking. I didn't know what their opinion said. He said, nobody listens to the dogs. <laughs> Look, John said on the 4th of July, he goes, oh, Obama won't spend money so the troops can have fireworks. But I'm thinking, suppose he did spend money on fireworks, that it would say, he's wasting money on fireworks, when there could be all kinds of way, better ways to spend the money. So no matter what he does, so, uh, somebody's going to say he did the wrong thing. Because they don't want him to succeed, that's all. Uh, I think because uh, he is the president, you can be, it's a different type of creativity, uh, by writing an African-American, you know, let's say you wrote a script, and you had an African-American president, you know, if you wrote that 20 years ago, that would be like science fiction. But now, it is a reality, and something that's uh, totally acceptable. A accept it. Uh, there was a, a film, uh, probably, 40 years ago, it was called The Man, and uh, um, uh, it was a, a, about uh, a man who was the um, uh, president pro tem of uh, Congress, and he rises to uh, be being the president. Uh, Rod Serling, who wrote The Twilight Zone, he was also the screenwriter of that, and a very young James Earl Jones was in that film and it's called The Man. Well, when, 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 when that film came out, people were like, wow, uh, a black president. Uh, it, was, oh, it was almost unbelievable that someone could rise to uh, such a political pinnacle. But now, it's a reality. Yeah. So can I ask you who did you vote for? I see little I voted. Can yes. I ask? I, I voted for Carrie um, as well. I did. Okay. I did I vote ask for Carrie. You, I know. Seriously, I'm really want to. You want to know why I, I voted for Carrie? <laughs> um, lesser of two evils. That's I think Carrie uh, potentially is a better president simply because he listens to more people outside of his own circle. Exactly. That's the difference between Bush and Kerry. Bush only listens to the people within his inner circle, mm. and most of the people within his inner circle are very closed-minded. Exactly. And that's what really concerns me about his administration in comparison to some of the administrations of the past. Right. Even Ronald Reagan's administration was a little bit more open than right. George Bush's administration is. Someone actually said a joke to me the other day that said that uh, Ronald Reagan's son is George Bush Jr. Ouch. I know. I isn't know. that terrible? Isn't that, I, isn't that I don't know that much about him, but that's ouch. That's kind of a... <laughs> but, it, but that says that says a lot right, right there. And the other concern I have for George Bush being reelected is then it puts his brother Jeb in the position to run in 2008. Don't do that. You're going to make me pass out right here. Oh, you want me to really? Terrified. What is this? I'm going to pass out. You're going to pass we, out? We couldn't do that. How scary would it be Jeb Bush running for president oh, and his vice president being Colin Powell? I'm going to reserve. I'm telling you now. <laughs> I'm telling you now. But you know, one thing. It's all possible. At least I know where Kerry stands. I'm not right. really certain where George Bush stands. A lot of times when he answers questions, he will sometimes metamorphosize the question. He'll skate around the question. To be perfectly honest with you, the few questions that he answered, I didn't agree and I didn't concur. But I was watching debates, and he did not, to my satisfaction, answer what was put before him. Kerry, you may or may not agree with him. I don't agree with stem cell research. He's for that. But at least I know where he stands on that and what issues. So when you ask him directly, he answers directly. And when you're in office, I want someone who's held accountable for what they're doing with regards to what's going on and I want to understand what you're doing. I don't want to, uh, well, maybe, and, uh, you know, I really want that kind of thing. You're going to vote for Barack Obama 
Um, is there any particular reason why you're going to vote for Barack Obama versus John McCain? Uh, I think at this point in American history, we've done enough, enough uh, damage with our foreign policy and his attitude toward foreign leaders and negotiations. You know, an open table where you can talk to friends and enemies is exactly what we need right now. Definitely. Get rock. Now, is that your idea? Yeah. Are you Jim? Yep. And it's copywritten? Yep. Wow. Explain me a track. What's to explain? This is turning into it's turning into Vietnam very quickly. Yes, but you also seem like someone that's really done their homework on it. So, uh, what are some of the aspects that are or similarities between Vietnam and Iraq? It's a it's a war we can't win. That's number one. It's and it's a war where we've lost the people. The people have totally turned against us. They know why we're there. And. Uh, they know it's not for them, and on top of that, see, it's sad. I st I did support uh, when we first st right after 9/11. I did support Afghanistan because I said, you know what? Anybody when the Taliban got on television, you remember that? When the Taliban got on television and they said to the children of America, remember that? I said, okay, well, that's it. You got to nuke these guys. But it went from just being a war on terrorism, it became a bigger joke than the war on drugs. When, the, when they came up with this uh, idea of the color system, I'm like, oh yeah, this will work. And it, you know, and it just got worse. And now this, if you notice, if you look back in your uh, archives, you'll see that when Bush's popularity started going down, it started getting around, I think, 50%, he started, uh, this uh, war with uh, Iraq, and the problem with that is we gave them those weapons, a lot of the, the weapons that they have. We, you know that we, we were a big uh, supplier of their weapons, right? I didn't know that. That's right? You know. Yes, I'm right? uh, very well aware of our um, policies on military arms during the late 70s and 1980s. Right, well, really it was the early 80s. I mean, when, when um, Reagan took office, that was it. You know, we became... Uh, Hussein's big ally. He just gave a lot of arms to Israel in the 70s, that's why I said that. Well, said I have no problem with Israel. I mean, that's personally, I know a lot of people do. I don't. Um, but, you know, that's, I guess we can uh, agree to disagree, but I have no problem with Israel at all. There's a remarkable uh, achievement called the Geneva Accords that were negotiated after President Clinton left office, but based on the good work that he did. And, and it describes in, in minute detail, based on GPS maps that even get down to the nearest yard of, of a line, uh, what can be a peaceful solution between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And, and it modifies the, the 1967 borders so that the Israeli settlers, half of them can stay in Palestine. And it proposes that Israel swap the Palestinians a, a, an equivalent acreage of land with no buildings on them, just east of the Gaza Strip. And the Geneva Accords call for a solution to the so-called right of return, which is very difficult for Israel. But they say, OK, the Palestinians can't return to Israel unless the Israeli government approves each individual family's request, which would be probably non-existent. But the Palestinians would be permitted to come back to Palestine. And those that can't come back would be compensated in a reasonable uh, degree for the property that they have lost in the past. Um, do you have an opinion about our current president, Barack Obama? Uh, yes, I have a pretty much a positive opinion. I think that he's made a few mistakes, but I think overall, I think he's done what he could. Now, what type of mistakes do you think he made? I think it was kind of, I think it was, me personally, I think it was kind of naive to say that passing any kind of bailout or stimulus would have kept unemployment below 8%. I, you know, if the government could control unemployment, it wouldn't be at 8%. Yeah, it's a close race so far. George I mean, Bush as you can see at the big screen over here, it's, uh, the, the, the results are coming in. It's a tight story, race. You'd have to say I, uh, it's only 8%. Uh, can't but make a call until it's done. I'm originally from Florida in the first blue. place, this and we all know what happened there in 2000. So, my thoughts so far, I'm optimistic, but I'm holding out until all the results are done. I'm not a very political person, but uh, in terms of how I feel about the current administration, um, I feel that the administration 
inherited a lot of difficulties from whether it be from the Bush administration or from even before. Um, and I think it's, it, it, there, are many, there are many challenges. And those challenges have been difficult for this administration. So, you know, people can say, oh, you know, I'm not really happy with what Obama's doing. But you've got to realize there are lots of obstacles that he's had to overcome to even get to where we are now. Now that he's in power for the next four years, or he's back in, in as president, we'll see if he can make a deeper impact uh, in the next four years to hopefully counteract all the, the negative and uh, difficult things that were done in the previous administration. How do you think our government takes care of, uh, of our homeless people? You know, in some respects you can say that you think that they may not care, but it took me to get an application from the government and them to approve me because they're so busy doing all this other stuff, they give it to Good Samaritans to do that type of work. From foundations and nonprofits, from, you know, Los Angeles Mission to all over the world, you know, Dauphin. So thank God we have you. Thank God we have the government a little bit. Right. I know God has been blessing us. You know, he, takes, he does take care of me, takes care of my family. He blesses me with great volunteers from all over the world. So and, you can help others, yeah. And people here are actually the ones who care. Very simple, because you know, a homeless person can stand on the side and flag a sign and nobody give him anything. But when they see something good that helps them, they donate to an organization that helps people. And we're very lucky that we have this kind of foot traffic and people of all homeless, different walks of life come to Venice Beach. It's one of the most donate visited places in the world. Fantastic. Yeah, we love to do this, yeah. That's cool. And Six how years in this. I'm Cammie and we're with TamaraPictures.tv. It's an internet TV website. It's awesome. It's exciting. We totally want to talk to you guys. Where did you get these outfits? In Mexico. In Mexico? Where in Mexico? Mexico City. We are here just for the weekend. You guys just came up here just for Gay Pride in West Hollywood? Yeah. Woo! For the Gay Pride. So who made them? Did you make them yourselves or did you have a maid? She made it. Yeah, she's a makeup artist. Makeup artist. And I always try to say to do something fun for the bride. Are you guys boyfriends? No. No. Just best friends? Yeah. Sweet. I love the hair. It's Thank awesome. You. Woo! Well shake it. Give us something. I have those boots. <laughs> One more thing, are your guys' feet killing you? Yeah. <laughs> I wore those boots the other night to the Playboy Mansion. I totally feel you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. What are your names? Jay. Yeah? Sign. Sign. Okay, say something out there to all your Spanish friends. Uh, bueno, bienvenidos a toda la gente que viene del resto de América al Gay Pride. Gay Pride Los Angeles 2009. All right, thank you, and we'll see you guys in a minute. Um, I was asking you a question, but you had said that it, um, the, the current state of uh, the political atmosphere, public policy, things like that, is in God's hands. Yeah, uh, I think the whole thing is in God's hands. You know, we sit there and we argue with each other and say what we're going to do, how we're going to help the people. It's always the same story, day in and day out. Whoever gets in still doesn't do what they say they're going to do. And when they do get in and try to do it, the other people are stopping them. So who really are for the people? To me, all the for the people is really is Christ. Because uh, we know that sooner or later, all this is gonna come to an end. And when it does come to an end, then we really got to pay judgment to the right person. But I think one of these days that uh, if people ever get together and pull together and say what they really want and stick together, then maybe we can change things. You'd have to talk about how high a price of gas is. But if you don't like the price of gas, then stop driving your vehicles, and I guarantee gas price will go down. But the whole problem is we don't stick together. And if we ever do stick together, we can change the world with God's help. It was sung by immigrants as they struck out for distant shores and pioneers who pushed westward against an unforgiving wilderness. Yes, we can. It was the call of workers who organized, women who reached for the ballot, a president who chose the moon as our new frontier, and a king who took us to the mountaintop and pointed the way to the promised land. Yes, we can to justice and equality. I never dreamed.
that that would ever happen. In fact, if somebody had told me it was going to happen, I wouldn't have believed it.